Good. Yeah, I mean, um, I do look forward to coming up with some other thoughts like this. You know, I feel like we've come a long way in terms of our inventiveness, making events COVID friendly. So, um, so we clearly were able to connect with folks. There were people both in and out of town that came. Um, we do have some voting business. Uh, I did not craft a motion for you um, because I kind of forgot about it till now. We came up with this after the last meeting. And so we do have the logistics needed to vote on the expenditure to reimburse Sally. So um, that would be out. So we would need a motion to approve Sally forty dollars. Is that right? It was two for two for twenty dollars a piece. Two for twenty each. So we would need a motion to approve the expenditure of forty dollars from the um, community service account. That's the account that we use for um, public outreach. So moved. Second. Okay. Should we vote? Yep. Drew. <laughs> Yes. Trevor? Aye. As Sally votes yes. Dave? Yes. I guess I should, I guess I should recruit myself. Uh, Dave? Yes. Uh, Bill Campbell? Yes. Allison? Yes. And Ginny? Yes. Okay. Approved. Thank you. I like this one, right? <laughs> I just noticed the cane. <laughs> And we did get this published. I don't know if it made the paper, um, the paper paper, but it did make Seacoast online. I did see it that way. Um, yes, yes, it was in the paper. Okay. The good. paper paper. <laughs> and that was fun. We went out for a photo op and uh, That's right. Nick, Nick was, and Bill and I and Ginny were paper there. Too. It was yeah. in the Ports with Harold. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? It was, wow. it was fun. It was fun. That's a good shot right there. Yeah, it's great. Oh, it's just gorgeous. The kid and the son. Yeah, that's, you could use that for yeah. marketing events. Just, just as an aside, my husband and I went out there to see the um, the alignment of Jupiter and... Oh. Yeah, it was a great setting for that. A really oh, great really? setting for that. Just as an aside. That's good. You got it in on a yep. clear night. Yep. The second night, it was not clear the first night. Right. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, everyone, I, this was easy to find on the homepage. I just did what Kristen yep. said to follow the, um, the recent events. And it got me right there. But we can stop looking at these. So. All right. Well, that was a great idea. I loved the the fun. Brought the fun. Just something little like the Abbey Road walk. You know, that little spark. Um, you know, elevates the, the the event significantly. So thanks, thanks to everyone for pulling that off. It's awesome. Okay. So what's next on our agenda? We are not doing the Prime Wetland waiver request. That was. They've decided to limit their forestry activities to the Hampton Falls section of their parcel. Is that correct? That's correct. So upon the applicant's request, that submission was withdrawn. Okay. I just, I, I did have a question about that, which was, do, do we know um, what conservation in Hampton Falls, uh, how they weighed in? Do we have that information? So I'm they curious. were actually scheduled to meet at the same time you guys are meeting. So for the applicant, when we were on site for the site walk yesterday, we were talking about how will they manage both meetings. But yeah. um, so we'll find out. OK, thank you. Was the Hampton Falls Conservation Commission at the site walk? They were not. They were not. <laughs> Kristen, why, why did they uh, withdraw? Uh, it sounded like they felt they could um, focus their efforts just on the Hampton Falls portion of the parcel. And at the end of the day, the portion that was in Exeter didn't seem, um, I don't want to say worth the effort, but uh, didn't seem like, well, I guess worth the effort. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, the, 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 the matting that was going to be required to get in there, it was going to, you know, it was going to be a half mile long or whatever. And uh, I wonder if that's what changed their minds.
What was going to have to be a half mile long? Access road. They, yeah. they needed to put down matting, you know, like they do under power lines when when they're working on those and stuff like that. Um, and it was going to be a pretty extensive amount of it required to, to get in there and not to place the shreds. So, so I can read um, the response or the email that I received, and it was from Crystal Eastman. And she says, I believe at this time, Frank Varney, that's the logger, and Mr. Hodge, who is the property owner, have agreed there is no need to cut wood in the designated prime wetland area in Exeter. As of this moment, it was my it is my firm belief that he is withdrawing the application for the waiver for prime wetlands. If something changes, I will let you know ASAP. I cannot thank you enough for your help and your time at the site visit today. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, we'll consider that case closed for now, at least. <clears throat> Unless there's any other discussion, we can, uh, we're going to do some goal setting for this year, this exciting year of 2021 that we have ahead of us. So Kristen, do you want to start that discussion off? I'm going to keep defaulting to you on these. Yeah. So um, in your packet, I provided quite a bit of information, maybe more than you care to, to think about at this time, but um, I included the, um, the goals that were established in 2020 and the items that you had um, identified for actions during 2020, plus there was kind of a catch-all at the end of, mm -hmm. on the second page of that. I also included um, kind of a consolidated document that lists all of the action items from various plans because I was feeling like there is some overlap between the master plan and for example, the natural resource inventory and sea rise. And so I just needed all of that in one document and I figured while I had it, I would share that with you as well. And so um, Drew and I were speaking this afternoon a little bit about approach for this. For me, um, although I do appreciate the goal setting because it, it kind of ensures that we're achieving the master plan goals, so much of what the commission focuses on is really based on those topics under the committee reports. And so, you know, it's property management, it's trails, and it's outreach. And then additionally, there might be some regulatory stuff that you would want to consider, such as proposing zoning amendments or something, something of that nature. So my thought tonight, um, unless you prefer the goal approach, is to really just kind of talk in general about some ideas that you have for those categories, property management, trails, and outreach. And then um, just to kind of get our creative juices going, and then I'll create a Google um, Doc that you can add to um, between now and the next meeting. And then we'll, um, and then I can kind of uh, set those up into the broader master plan action items and things of that nature after we get the actions pulled together. What do you guys think about that? Fine with me. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah. So, I, uh, can, can I just I add something? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I think it's a great exercise we're going through, but I think we should keep in mind that for a good portion of 2021, we're still going to be under the specter of COVID. So social distancing is still going to have to be in the back of our minds when we plan anything. Um, so just, I just think we should keep that in mind so yeah. we don't set a goal of, of having a huge event and you know, I, I don't know if we, I don't think I don't think we can we can pull it off. That's what I'm saying. Uh, everything I'm reading uh, with the new strain, the slow roll, even the, uh, an accelerated rollout of vaccine. Uh, I'm still waiting for mine, as all of us are. Uh, still says that even until fall of 2021, we're still going to have to practice social distancing, masking, and so forth. So I don't want to discourage our goal setting. I just want to make sure we keep that in mind when we when we plan anything out of any significant events. Thank you. Yeah, I agree, Don. We have to continue the same mindset for for this year. I mean, maybe it's possible we could 
think about a, a bigger event and later in the fall as we've done for Rain's Barn later in the fall, but maybe not. Uh, but yeah, we should continue COVID, COVID safe activities as best we can. Um, okay, so should we start with, where should we start? With trails? Where do we want to begin? Keep leading us, Kristen, you're doing a good oh, job. Okay. Um, why don't we start with property management? Because that's the next one, that's the first one on our agenda. Okay. So, um, just to start, I mean, we know what we have coming up in this current year. I think quite a bit of effort will be put toward the LCHIP grant application. And so the stages for that are we've been working to develop a request for proposals to get an updated list of repair needs and cost estimates. Um, I just got approval to, um, to take the next step with that this morning. So um, that does push our timeline. We had kind of thought put the RFP out with a due date of, I think it was January 29th. So that might push us a little bit because there's some advertising time required in the paper. But anyway, that's a little too in the weeds. So um, there's the RFP and then the grant application for LCHIP. That would, if we receive the grant, then we would move forward with a warrant article. So there's quite a bit of effort that would go toward um, working to implement the repairs at Rain's Barn. Um, and then I know Carlos, I, I was just looking, I didn't notice, is he here? No. So I know- No, Carlos, Carlos is not here. Carlos is, um, has been working very diligently on the invasive removal at um, Henderson Swayze. And, um, and so I think that's going to be a long-term effort, although progress has been made, dramatic progress has been made out there. So, you know, that's another project that I was thinking of um, for property management. And then we have annually, we have our mowing obligations. Um, David O'Hearn had some equipment issues. So the perimeter of Rain's farm, um, we were cutting back the autumn olive. He didn't quite complete that. So I requested a, um, an encumbrance and that was approved. So we still have some 2020 funds available to finish that project up. So those were kind of the things I was thinking of. We have also been working on a game camera project where we have um, game cameras along Bloody Brook where the brook passes underneath Route 27 and Route 101 and have documented some incredible footage of, um, of wildlife using that area. And so um, I would love to uh, collaborate with DOT to um, improve the fencing and, and improve the ability of wildlife to continue to use that corridor in a more facilitated way. So those were kind of on my radar screen. I'm sure there's more there, but um, but keeping in mind what Don had mentioned with COVID, you know, I'm sure that we could be doing stuff with pollinator pathways. I just don't quite have in my mind how that would look under um, under this scenario. One other thing, uh, Kristen, that Carlos and I would uh, have been trying to put a trail, extend the trail on um, Allen the Allen Street project and we hope to do that this spring once uh, we were kind of up in the air on it because it was so dry this uh, fall that uh, we weren't sure where to go with regard a couple of wetlands out there but we'll finish it up that's one thing to finish another question <clears throat> are the game cameras uh, giving you stills or videos we have a mix because I was wondering if there was some way with with uh, Bob Glovsky, then we could put it together and make a uh, some sort of a, a film that we could put on a short video that we could put on the website or something like that. Yeah, I definitely think that's possible. Bob is helping us. One of his cameras is out there and he has put them together um, in kind of like a put the video footage together in kind of like a, a short clip. Um, 
So I, I do think that's possible and that would be exciting. Uh, we, I did also have um, Amanda Stone with uh, Cooperative Extension reach out today. Um, they're interested in doing an article in support of the wildlife corridor effort um, and report that, uh, that the Nature Conservancy developed to as a way to encourage other communities or kind of give ideas to other communities for how they can start implementing the recommendations of the wildlife corridor plan. So, um, so you know, I think, I think pictures of, you know, charismatic bobcats with young is exciting to everyone. And so um, I, I really think that there's so much opportunity to um, not just focus on that corridor, but we have numerous corridors in, in town that we could look at just to really have a better understanding of how all of these incredible conservation lands around us that Exeter's worked so hard to protect could could be connected and serve as as a larger habitat area genetically for all of these species. So. Carlos has joined us. Welcome, oh. Carlos. Carlos, are you alone in the room? Oh, he's, yeah, I guess he's setting up. Oh. Carlos, can you hear us? Finally can now. I wish you could hear me. Faint. Okay. Yeah, he was getting in with new, some new technology, trying to get it to work and got kicked out or said I was in. There you are. I couldn't couldn't get out. Um, I may have to switch to a headset if you can't hear me though. We can hear you now, you're or good. I can. Okay, you're good. Now. good. You're good, you're good. good. All right, I'm present. <laughs> so I, yeah, I like the, the increased, the, it's a good time to do things with game cameras. That seems like a very COVID friendly thing whether we could get submissions. I mean, there are a lot of game cameras throughout town and people's backyards. I mean, I have one too, and I've, I haven't gotten anything terrific, but um, that's certainly an interesting idea how, yep. how to use. Um, we do, we did uh, approve a game camera for, for rains, which we have not uh, placed yet, but it's on, it's on the agenda to do that. Um, both to, to track the wildlife and we also want to use it to document the, um, the visitors to the, the, the human visitors to the property. So uh, Krista and I will be working on that. That is an interesting idea, Drew, about creating some sort of place where people, I know yeah. a friend yeah. of mine in California through her game camera brand, I think it's like game camera neighborhood or something. And, and everyone can share their footage there. It would be really interesting to find some way to set that up. Yeah, I know like David O'Hearn and others have, there's pictures of bears, things in extra that you don't normally think of, but they, they're here. That's something we can think about. Yeah, maybe we could do some sort of uh, game camera bingo or, or something. To that. <laughs> yeah, all right, Nick is bringing the fun. I like it. <laughs> well, another, you know, I think you guys are on to a good idea because you, you're right. A lot of people have game cameras. I've got one. I, it's not up this winter, but I recorded a deer raiding my bird feeders at midnight for several nights. So uh, I think if we, we could have a contest or a something like that where people could submit their best game camera. Their best cameras. videos or stills of, from their game cameras and for for that compilation of, uh, of uh, that, that maybe Bob can put together a compilation. So there's a, an idea to engage the public, a PR, you know, public relations thing. I think that's, I think there's some good, some good thoughts we can, we can do that. Sounds like I a, know a, lot of people a viral camera. video in the making yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, and I I would suggest something like Nick's idea of bingo or the, you know, thinking about the scavenger hunt at Reigns. It takes a little bit of pressure off when we're like, send us your best photo. I might be like, oh, well, I got one of this like deer butt. Is that good? I don't know. So like you, you censor yourself, select a little more. Whereas if it's like, oh, get one of a four legged animal, get one of something with fur or something with feathers or whatever, then it's more approachable. I like it. Yeah, I'll get one of your your uh, Amazon Prime delivery guy. <laughs> delivery <package. laughs> Good like an animal. We got a lot of those. <laughs> okay, what other property goals do we have? So, I mean or ideas people have. I think we're just trying to brainstorm some ideas here for how how to best manage all the properties we have. And if we don't have, if you don't have any ideas now, that's fine too, because we're gonna compile a list and then we can think about it in the, the off time and uh, try and regroup about it at our next meeting, or at least one where we don't have a full schedule. Well, I continue to record um, sightings of in patches of invasives. Um, I've been doing that with the Gaia GPS app. Um, you can also do it. There's iNature. I don't know how many of you are using iNature, but you can record sightings with that um, of anything. Is that um, and if you get, that allows you to identify plant species? Uh, that one will allow you to record it. Um, you can also become an identifier. Others will look at what you record um, and they will offer identifications of it. Right. Um, some people become the experts in different groups of organisms. It's um, becoming one of the best um, and most used um, citizen science uh, platforms, I think, globally. It's, it's exploded from when I first, and I haven't used it much, um, but I've recently seen a couple webinars of people um, explaining how it can be used and how it is being used. Um, and it's pretty impressive. Um, and things like I thought of, we could actually put in for the town a connectivity or we could pick a topic that we think is important. Um, bird lists for all, each property. Um, and those could be added into by multiple people, just putting entries into the I nature and then create a project um, that would be an ongoing project. Hmm. So it sounds like we should look into this app and what possibilities there are. Allison, have you, do you have experience with it? You were nodding. Yeah, I do. So I'll share a few things. So within the iNaturalist app, you can, there is an identification function where it will, you take a picture, send it, and it'll right there if it can provide options. They've just launched a new app that's dedicated to exactly that. I think it's called iSeek, S-E-E-K, but it's associated with iNaturalist. Something that colleagues of, of mine did in my work life is work with communities to do a bio blitz on municipal properties to go out and inventory, you know, a bio blitz, like everything, flora, fauna, um, and they used that app and, and that came with some training and then everyone came together and there were graduate student and academic faculty experts who were out helping with um, identification. But there is the potential, I think, if we, I think we are better off really focusing on say one given property or like Carlos said, focusing on, okay, we want to accumulate a really good bird list for our properties. So focusing on, you know, narrowing it down, and then we could start putting out the call to crowdsource this information. And I think that's a great way 
to gather information, I would just suggest we start from a place of, okay, what do we need this information for, you know, and, and, um, you know, if we're looking to promote rains and the biodiversity of rains and, you know, the bird species that use it in different seasons or something, then that's like a perfect goal. And then we, we, you know, try and galvanize effort around that. And that was just an example, but um, I think it'd be a really cool idea and I'd, I'd be happy to participate. In, in setting that up with folks. It sounds like a neat opportunity to, for this particular moment to find ways for people to do things on our properties to help us. Um, I, I like that. I'm not quite sure exactly what it would look like, but it seems like a good thing to, I want to, I want to get it on my phone and play around with it now. So yeah, I might suggest those who are intrigued, you know, download the app and play around with it, like you said, Drew. And then if there are other folks interested in this, maybe we, you know, start brainstorming what some of our questions are that we're, we're looking for data to, to address and start from there and then can devise a plan for spreading the word about what data we're looking for. I'll just pipe in real quick too. another one that that I use around my yard. Um, another app that's been really um, helpful for me is called Picture This. Um, so just another one for consideration for you guys to play around with and see what you like. But I've been happy with it. Is that an identification tool? Yep. So, yeah, you just take a picture of, you know, some leaves or some vines or whatever you're trying to identify. And it pops right up with... Um, what it what it is it's fascinating yeah i've been surprised i use that too nick um for annual plant identification because i'm terrible at it but i've been so surprised at how accurate it is yeah i i've learned a lot from just using this like around the art like i said it's it's fascinating so worth worth checking out Okay, do we want to move on to the next topic? Or are there any other um, any other ideas for property management? We went through some of the main things, invasives, L-chip, grant for rains, barn. I mean, that's going to got to be our focus this year. We don't want to spread ourselves too thin. Uh, why don't we move on to uh, trails? And obviously we can come back to this. So we're just, um, I want to just keep us moving. So we, I was hoping for one hour tonight. So that's my goal. Eight o'clock. That's pretty <laughs> quick. I got 22 minutes. Um, what, what's going on? We, we've seen a lot of ag trail use. There's been some work. What, what do we need in 2021 for trails? Um, not much beyond what we have right now. Um, it's, um, we've got a, uh, pretty big donation from Exeter Lumber of, uh, wood for repair and, um, new structures as, as needed. Uh, they also donated a, uh, a convex mirror that Jay Perkins and I are gonna mount on the, um, on the rail bridge by the uh, Trestle parking lot so that people coming out of that lot can see back towards town and what's coming and what's about to hit them. Um, he, he's got a contact at Pan Am and uh, I guess we got the, the okay to do that. Um, been working on the trail signage, trail marking, uh, bridge repair. Um, but I would say in general, um, every, everything is in pretty good shape. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of people out there walking, a lot of people out there biking. Um, you might give a shout out to uh, Toby and his group. Well, you're in that group too, but 
the, the work that, the, that we're really getting a lot of help from what would have been the trail committee if, if we were organized more. Uh, but this informal group is, that you know, Dave, has just been great. Yeah, uh, Toby uh, Furman set up this uh, Facebook group called Four Rock Riders, uh, and that's been tremendous. Uh, anytime there's any sort of need out there whatsoever, it's it's almost as if it's addressed in hours, not days, not weeks. Um, and things get taken care of very quickly. Um, and so, yeah, that's that's about the state of things out there, and uh, everything looks looks pretty good. I've also been really pleased with um, the the Fort Rock Riders page. Toby does a great job at talking about trail conditions and, you know, when maybe it's too soft to ride. Um, there, there were some posts about um, discouraging leaf blowing. And so I really do feel like through that page there, and, you know, through that page, there's a, there's a second opportunity for us to get um, a voice out there um, that's heard by the people who are using the trails, most mountain bikers who are using the trails. So, um, so, you know, I, I've been really appreciative of having that group and it's a very active um, Facebook page. I only check in maybe once every couple months, but um, but it's, it's surprising how how on it they are for repairs. Yeah, it seems like um, it's it's really helped with some of the renegade stuff, too. Um, you know, leaf blowing has always been a controversial topic. It, of course, came up again this year. Um, but it was discussed on this page, and I think it got it got it out of everybody's system, so that um, the, the the issue kind of went away. Um, so that that that's been extremely helpful to to have that, and um, you know, hopefully uh, he can keep it going. But he does a great job of moderating it. He's constantly on it and um, we have you know speaking of renegade we have had a couple things pop up this year Carlos identified a trail that had been built uh, that uh, encroached onto the land behind the Dunkin Donuts on Epping Road um, it was inadvertent um, I know the guy who did it uh, we contacted him and um it was, it's been closed down. And there was another, another one over near Deer Trees. Uh, somebody just on their own put in a trail. Um, but again, we, we contacted them. I explained to them why we didn't think it was a good idea. It was discussed in the group and uh, we closed it down. So uh, it's, it's been a great tool. So in terms of other trail um, trail activities for this coming year, we did not get a whole lot of submissions for our trail challenge. And I'd like to kind of think about maybe why that is. And, and um, I, I think having a way, some, some sort of way to have people locate unusual places that they're not typically going to for shorter hikes, um, it would be great. And so I keep coming back in my mind to the um, trail passport that we developed. So a lot of the posts have been torn down or damaged in some way. And so it would take additional effort, but not a lot of additional effort to put the posts back in, um, get a new rubbing markers for each post. Um, and to me, that seems like a COVID-friendly, family-friendly um, activity that would make sense in these times. So, um, you know, it would take some, I would definitely need some help getting the posts out there and, and installed. Um, and then we'd need to talk about um, rubbing markers and designs because what we had before wasn't ideal. It worked, but it wasn't ideal. So um, if there's someone else who's interested in working on that, I would love to collaborate. Um, 
but I do think that could be really successful. I, I had someone reach out to me um, because I it's still posted on our, our website, but it, you know, it has a kind of like a warning that, you know, many markers are missing or something like that. Um, and so I did have someone reach out to me. She was really excited to take her kids out there. And so, you know, it was kind of unfortunate to have to say it's really kind of defunct at this point, but um but I think there could be interest to something like that. Kristen, I'm happy to work on that with you. Great. Okay. Yeah. yeah, ditto. I think that's a super idea. That's just super. That's a great idea. Yeah, that I think would be a good thing as spring comes around. And I know in Kingston, they um, they implemented it, but they also partnered. They had great success with it. They partnered with a local ice cream um, place. And so instead of the, you know, trail um, sticker that we offer, they offered <laughs> ice cream and, um, and they had a ton of people, you know, the conservation commission approved up to a certain amount. And so whoever they partnered with, you know, let them know when they were approaching the limit. Um, and they had quite a bit of people turn out for that. So that might be a consideration. I think that would be a great consideration with uh, something like still wells. I mean, yeah, that people are awesome. running all over town for that, or all over the woods. <laughs> yeah, you yeah could, we, could, we could do craft we beer. To do that, for sure. <laughs> we could do craft beer. Yeah. The craft beer, okay. <laughs> An adult version, maybe that's yeah. what the trail challenge is. <laughs> <laughs> be like, uh, right, bar hopping. It's a different kind of bar hopping. Um, okay, so yeah, I think the trail passport, I know that was something on, on our other list last year and we didn't get to it, but um, that would be awesome for this year. Is there any way we could, uh, we were, we've been, or I've been thinking, and I think uh, Sally too, about an ADA trail, so, and, and then we were looking at a range, not really a long trail, but some way that we could make uh, the, the property available to wheelchairs and whatever. Uh, I, I've had a couple of ideas proposed to me, um, but uh, if, if we get, are we gonna get a parking lot up or at least some gravel up near the barn, not near the barn, but that top hill before you get to the barn? That's that what was on the list for uh, public works and uh, but they've sort of been under the gun recently, but that is on still on their list and we'll follow up with that. If there's some way we could, um, uh, I, I have to look into what kind of materials you need. I don't, we, we have to be careful. We don't interfere too much with the hay, right. but um, I'd love to see something. I'd be interested in working a little bit on something like that. If, if uh, we other if people thought it was be worthwhile. Would that, would that check any box on the L chip application, Sally? I'm sorry, say that would again? That, would that check any box on the L chip application to help that along or not? No. Or I don't, maybe, I, maybe in the narrative that goes yep, with it? Yep. It well, wouldn't hurt. Yeah, no, it, was, it definitely wouldn't hurt. I, you know, they're, they're, so if, if we did something in conjunction with the renovation, there, there, there are ideas that I have about ways to get um, wheelchair accessibility closer to the barn that don't re rely on the, on the parking lot. But, um, and if there's going to be a lot of work at Reigns, that's something that we could look, we could look into. There's a, there's a section where we could pull in from the road um, that would require just, I think, a minimal amount of, um, of, of excavation work and would not interfere with the, with the mowing. So it's something we'll be paying attention to as we move forward. I don't remember specifically, Kristen, do you remember if there's a, any specific mention in the Elchim application or something that uh, refers to accessibility? No, yeah, it's not ringing a bell, but again. But, but we, we could um, say that that's one of our intentions as part of the application, that's a good point. I do also think um, QB Road is a great opportunity to um, 
with modification for like a viewing platform or something along those lines um, because it's a it's a there's decent parking there it's already a pretty solid base um, and going out to that wetland you see the, the amount of wildlife that you see out there is really incredible there's very few locations in Exeter that I think that you can get to quickly um, and and see that kind of diversity you know it's a it's a substantial marsh and so everything from turtles nesting I've seen you know to birds and, and dragonfly you name it but um, that could be another possibility another one would be um the circle up at the industrial park, the um, that um, area that is kind of extends out into the marsh behind C3I a little ways, and Public Works uses that to uh, station a backhoe to clean out the beaver dam once in a while. Uh, but that, with again, relatively modest amount of work, could be transformed into a viewing platform and it's 50 feet from pavement so that that would lend itself to be um, accessible also yeah i think that's a really great goal to identify the properties where we could um in, in increase enhance accessibility for those properties that make sense i think that's a really good goal and highlight that on our on our uh, website yeah. Kristen, have you received any um, Eagle Scout project requests? No, not this year. Because I think that would, a platform maybe would be too ambitious, but I, I think that would be a great Eagle Scout project. Yeah. Especially. It might, might be a challenge, but yeah. Great. Good idea. Lots of good ideas here. Okay, so we'll put on an ADA trail accessibility or general enhancing accessibility in our trail networks as a, a good, good long-term goal. Um, anything else on trails before we go to outreach? Okay, let's, any ideas for outreach events? this year? So I did have Parks and Recs. I feel like we've had a really successful collaboration with them. It's um, I, It's been a lot of fun and it's brought connection to the younger crowd that we, you know, we didn't always have, have connections with before. They reached out um, wanting to do winter hikes one monthly, um, similar to our um, our after school hiking program that we did through the fall. And, um, and so they were looking to determine whether, whether the CONCOM con wanted to collaborate on monthly hikes, as well as more of a family oriented hike over February vacation and over April vacation. And I did talk to Nick or email Nick before the meeting, it sounded like he was on board. Um, but if others are interested, in leading a hike or have ideas of where to go. Um, I, I really think it would be a worthy collaboration. Sounds great. I know we've we've done some good things with Parks and Rec. Um, do we need they do they do we need to get back to them? Yeah. So Nick, you're volunteering yourself again? Yeah, I'm happy to do that. I think that's that's my calling card to this group if I if I have one. So <laughs> Well you don't you don't have I mean you can have other roles too. You don't need to No, or, no, I I enjoy it. I, it's fun. Excellent. So maybe Nick, you and I could talk about which properties to highlight. Um during this upcoming session and give them a list. Okay. I'm in. Great. Are there other outreach event ideas, Kristen, that you had on your plan? 
No. I, so one that, you know, we started the climate outreach, um, climate change, adaptation, preparedness outreach with the town boards. I would love to take the next step with that. I'm just not sure with everything that we're talking about. Um, but, I mean, I think that would be kind of a heavy lift. Um, some sort of even if it was virtual forum where we could share some of these reports or at least sea level rise um, uh, predictions and those maps, but um, that and that is also identified on the master plan as an action item. Um, so that's kind of in my head, but not really formed into anything yet. You're saying to a more general audience than the, the previous presentation, which was for board staff. Yeah, I mean, I, I every year keep coming back to the concept of an air, alewife festival, Don. I know I can't let it go, but some sort of regular celebration of Exeter's natural resources. You know, the alewife is on our seal. It really is such a, a kind of iconic way to celebrate it's it's springtime you know there's so many things going for it um and i maybe there are opportunities to collaborate like the energy committee they have an annual event or had we're having annual events for you know um energy efficient you know cars were on display and some other things the sustainability have, you know there was the climate action open house i i just feel like there's something there that we can do but it's a little mucky in my mind right now could there be some virtual presentation could we have an alewife an online virtual alewife festival this year where we have some presentation about the alewife and some other related things like sea level rise or we could talk about town properties or I'm just throwing out ideas here. It would be fun. I mean, so Bob Glowacki does do the, he has a camera that can go underwater and he got some great footage during the migration a few years back. Maybe we have like a live, live showing of that or something. I don't know. Here's, here's the whole video that Don stars in and does a great job speaking to. Just repeat it. Yeah. Um, I think there's, some, there's a lot you can do around a concept of the Alewife Festival and collaborate with the Rec Department, the Energy Committee, the Sustainability Committee, Sea uh, Rise. You know, then we get a perfect venue at Swayze Parkway. But again, I I don't know how to pull this off, or is it will it be that effect of being virtual? You know, I, I if you could do it in 2022, have a four or five hour event down there, and bring all that in around the time of the uh, of the Alwife run, you could you could make a great you know a great day of learning, uh, you know. All these, uh, of all the, with all these collaborators, but I, <laughs> I have a tough time living in the virtual world. I mean, I, and I'm not pull it off virtually, but I mean, you know, an actual festival could be pulled off because you can get a, you can get a lot of partners. You can you can you can you can get some p people from DES come in, fish and game, you know, to, to serve the exhibits. I mean, it takes some planning, but I. I I know we're, we're still limited to try to do things virtually right now, but I maybe it's something we should hopefully, uh, with hope and prayers, can do in 2022. So I, I would um, just uh, want to remind us that the uh, as an, an outreach event that I think will happen in the spring, a socially distanced event at uh, Park Street Common for the planting of trees, which the trees have already been uh, purchased. And uh, the plans were to do that in the, in the fall, late summer, fall, I can't remember the exact date, I think it was August, but uh, we had to postpone that because of the drought. 
not because of COVID, but because of the drought. And so if the drought has been resolved by the spring, the, tr the tree subcommittee will be organizing that event. So something to um, keep in mind. And it would, it's a nice community event um, that, that I think will be getting some attention. The drought is officially downgraded in this area to abnormally dry, which isn't considered a drought. Good. So we're, we are out of official drought Good. in Rockingham County. Good. And they just just speaking as a as a uh, this is sort of an aside for outreach, but the tree committee has reapplied for Tree City USA designation for this this coming year. So just FYI. They did also mention, so they're interested in seeking an intern to help with the tree inventory, yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the street tree inventory. Mm -hmm. um, I missed that meeting, Sally, so um, I didn't mention it then, but I did follow up with um, either Gwen or Eileen about it. Um, Dover just had a street tree inventory done by volunteers. And so it was an app that, you know, they just had their phone and they filled out the data as you went along on tree, you know, someone adopted my street and they walked down the street and identified, you know, the tree species that were there. And, um, and I do think something like that could be pulled off. Um, yep. Similarly, maybe having someone, I can't, I think it was Stratford Regional Planning Commission who was involved with setting that up, um, but maybe at least having someone like that come to talk about what they did in Dover would be um, interesting. Yeah. Great. Did um, Trevor or Allison, did you have comments about Ale, the Alewife Festival or something else? Your hands were up. Yeah, go ahead, Allison. Uh, sure. Thanks, Trevor. Um, just two things. I mean, this timing seems perfect for me. No one's going to pull off an alewife festival by next year, right? And COVID won't allow for that anyway. So it seems to me we're in a perfect time to start putting out feelers to other groups. I mean, I think if we had an all boards meeting, which we all talk about the value of, um, this would be perfect fodder for that to see like what each department or board what role they could play and in the meantime i mean i just see a silver lining of all the many awful things of the pandemic is people reconnecting to the outdoors and i think about how if you don't know it especially the way our town is oriented with you're not but if you don't know it, there's huge migration of alewives that comes and now reaches beyond the bridge. Um, you, if you didn't know it, you might not know what was going on. And so some opportunity like the video, Kristen, or some short, small event at the beginning of the run that's online that says, hey, everybody, like, this is what's happening in the middle of your downtown. Like, keep your eye out because it's going to, you know, when you see the gulls, this is what's happening. Um, I think that could be a great virtual event to hold maybe with the help of Rob and his great video, something short and simple, just to say, this is what's happening. Keep your eye out. You know, it doesn't have to be a big event. And then we can start thinking about the big event down the road. Yep, I completely agree with, with Allison and Don. Um, I got reaction to having just a strictly a, a digital something this year was kind of like, oh, but like, I think, I think having a, some kind of festival planning for 2022 and giving ourselves a plenty of leeway is, is a great idea. I think that really um, looks at it pretty responsibly, but also sort of like what's people's appetite for like, you know, there is going to be an after COVID time. And when that after COVID time finally arrives, you know, we have a big festival lined up and it's going to be great. So, so come on down. I think that's a lot of fun. Maybe uh, maybe try to get Laura involved, Laura Bricker, uh, and get the word out that way too. You know, just to kind of reinforce that message, because I think that's something she'd be interested in. Not to get in the weeds of the of the festival, we should have a five k, the Ly five k, like. I don't know, swimming past Life dams run. and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah the Yellow Wife run. Yeah, see? Yeah, I like that. 
I like it. You got to get Parks and Rec on. Maybe they can do that. They do a Get Fit in May 5K at the elementary school, at Main Street School. So that would overlap. Oh, yeah, the Main Street School. Run for fun. Or is that it's at Lincoln Street, maybe, actually. No, but, it's Main Street. Or it's at both. It goes, it loops around. But it, um, anyways, that's a fun idea. Maybe send Trevor into the water and see if he can catch one barehanded. <laughs> <laughs> It yeah. would be just for fun. All of these are kind of spring-ish, right? And so it would be neat to have like once a month signs of spring. So you know, we could do like a film some vernal pool activity, or you know, and, and kind of the the woodcock. Although woodcock's so hard to film, <laughs> but um, you know, all of these natural signs of spring, and do some sort of quick highlight video virtual highlight of those of those things and and through facebook we're talking about posting things through the web town's website and facebook yeah i don't know when we had a good turnout in the rains barn and that was primarily through facebook advertising for the solstice for last year, for this year, we had it on our, um, it, that's something I think we, I need to get better at is inquiring from everyone who submits how they learned about these things. But um, so for the, this year, it was on Facebook, it was in the paper and on the town's website. And, and the community forum. Uh, oh, got shared to the Exeter community forum. Mm. on Facebook yeah that's a that's a popular tool that community forum so I have to think of that okay these are great ideas for outreach um, I'm sure we could there's a lot more ideas to, does anyone have anything else before with and this isn't the end of outreach events but we'll I want to keep us moving here um, so we can end early. Yeah, so I will put all of these into a Google Doc and send the link around. It'll be on the Conservation Commission share drive. So if you have thoughts, um, feel free to add it and maybe we'll summarize it before um, at the next meeting. Yeah, so if we get more ideas, we can put them in and we'll go from there. Okay, awesome. Do we want to move on to committee reports, which are these same topics, but is there, I think there are a few things we want to highlight that happened recently. Kristen, do you have any um, property management, anything else to talk about under these topics? Um, I'm trying to think how the thing, I was going to bring some things up under other business, but. Um, yeah. Uh, so we did, I did have, I guess it's under trails or pro maybe property management. I don't know, but um, I did have Mark Dolliff reach out to me. So he is the property owner of um, the Dolliff Conservation Easement. And I know you all know this, but in the event that others might be watching, we have some town owned conservation lands that the town is responsible to own the property outright um, and manages it for conservation values. But there are also conservation easements, which are privately owned properties um, that we then manage the development rights for uh, and ensure the uses that happen there are in concert with the conservation. Um, Mark Dolloff, who's the private uh, landowner for quite a bit of the property within the Little River Conservation Area north of Brentwood Road, reached out with concerns about a new trail and some crossing structures and blazing um, that had occurred that connects to the Little River Trail network from, um, it appears, the Louis Lewisburg or Louisburg Circle. Um, uh, development toward the Brentwood town line and it connects um, if you go to the Little River Conservation Area and cross over the old mill site bridge that's where the trails connect to 
Um, and so, uh, so I think that it would be worth doing a little um, outreach with that community. They do have quite a bit of a area around the homeowners association owned land around their development that they could, could freely put trails in, but, um, but any, any work like that would need to be approved by the property owner. Um, and he is not interested in, uh, oh, excellent. Yeah, he's not interested in um, expanding the trail network at, at this time. And it's also important to note, this is one of the, um, this is one of the parcels in town that biking is not permitted. Um, and so it really, the intent from the original donors, the Dalla family was to kind of keep this uh, kind of sort of rustic, um, low, low, low key conservation area with lots of wildlife value. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I don't know if you want to point, I don't think I can. Can you see, it. can you see this? My yeah. Map? No? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so that's the area we're talking about. And there's this bridge and it's sort of a confluence of, of three river or two rivers there. So it's a neat area if you've never been back there. It's Louisburg Circle Development is that circle to the uh, left? Yeah. It's right in here. So there's a connection now that didn't used to exist. Yeah, and I just walked it as well. Um, and it is set up for bikers with some obstacles. Um, it's not contoured at all on the little, the few areas that actually go up and down. Most of it's very flat wetland um, with some very rustic crossings that they have put in. Um, but yeah, it's not really set up for just a walking trail. It's set up with the idea of riding a bike on, I think. Um, so that would seem to me to be contrary to the, to the idea of that area, um, as well as I don't think there was any consulting with, with the Dallas or the town putting that in. Yeah, so we're going to follow up. Yeah. We have anything really to decide here, but we're going to continue to talk about this and see what we can find out. So. I will also talk to Toby about it because um, just because it's called Fort Rock Riders, um, I don't know if we necessarily have to limit the usage of that web page to Fort Rock. If, just, just keep it in mind as you're going through this that we might be able to use that as a means of communication if um, people are starting to push into that area too try to uh, eliminate that. All right, that sounds good, Dave. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, there wasn't evidence of bike tracks on it, so there were uh, people using it, fresh and old tracks when I walked it just the other day. Um, so the, yeah, my concern is if once it gets on the sites of bikers, it might quickly become um, fairly heavily used although it doesn't have a ton of challenge on it um, and it's a bit out. I think that'd be great to have it stopped quickly in terms of bike use for sure. So that could be good. Yeah, my, my guess is it's gonna be a younger crowd that set that up. What we've been seeing is um, with COVID going on, um, a lot of younger bike, a lot of younger people are taking up biking and they all want to build their own trails. Um, and sitting right next to that development, isolated like that, um, I don't think it would be any of the regulars doing it. So um, it might be worth, if there's, a, if there's a neighborhood association, it might be worth contacting them. 
Yeah, that's what we were considering. I think there, there has to be. There's there are uh, there definitely a homeowners association. Okay, well, thanks for letting us know about that, Kristen. Okay, do we have any other committee reports? Is there anything else? No, we have one other business to talk about, but why don't we vote on the, uh, or review the minutes, and then we'll get to our other business, and then we'll wrap up, if that sounds like a plan. Anyone have a chance to read the minutes? Uh, I had a few minor things on the second page at the top, uh, the first paragraph on the second page, it talks about three surface supplies, which don't have the sustainable capacity previously thought, surface plants. I would just make it be surface water supplies to make it clear we're talking about water here, um, surface water supplies and surface water plants were put on hold to look at groundwater. And then I had one other one on page five. It talks about Eric Field as the contact person, sort of two thirds of the way down. Um, in terms of the our contact at Dancer, not Dread, at Dancer, it's Eric, is it Feldbaum? Eric Feldbaum. So hopefully we can get that spelling right. We'll pass that along. And besides that, I didn't have anything else. Did anyone else find any? I think these are good, solid minutes. So thank you to the to Dan for doing those. So unless anybody has anything else, I'll move. We approve those with the uh, edits that, that Drew mentioned. I'll second that. We ready for a vote? Drew? Yeah, um, yes. Trevor? Yes. Sally votes yes. Dave? Yes. Bill? Yes. Carlos? Yes. Allison? Yes. All right, excellent. So our other uh, sort of correspondence or other business was just following up with um, about the this project we were talking about last meeting with the um, groundwater exploration. Um, just wanted to give you an update. We have had some correspondence with the town and their consultants and Eric Feldbaum at DNCR about the ability to do groundwater exploration at the Smith Page parcel as the committee or the commission voted last month. And so they are going forward with that. There's a whole process and there's actually a site meeting scheduled for tomorrow with Eric and the town and the consultants. And I believe Kristen is going. I believe I'm not going. Uh, but it is an open meeting. If there's anybody on the commission, I don't know if you really wanted to go. I'm sure you could go with Kristen. I don't. Um, but you can let us know. Uh, it's tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow. What time do you Tomorrow at nine. Oh, not afternoon, tomorrow at nine. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and there is an application. It's a temporary disturbance. Forgetting the exact name, but there is a temporary use application um, that would need to be submitted. And then the DNCR actually has to forward it along to the uh, park service and then they are the ultimate ones to review it and decide 
So it, it's a whole application process that will need to be completed before um, anything can be done out there. Has the town reached out to anybody around there? I'm thinking of the neighbor on the uh, north side there who's uh, not too, he gets a little excited if more than two people walk through. Uh, <laughs> when, when he sees those trucks coming through, he's gonna climb a wall. <laughs> So it is a pretty substantial process that will need to happen before we even get there. Um, the meeting tomorrow really is just to meet with um, Eric and get a better understanding for uh, what the town is looking to do so that he can better advise what the process would be like. Um, under Drew's encouragement, the group did reach out to the neighbor um, to the south of our entrance, Charles Dunbar, and he has graciously allowed um, Public Works for us all to meet out there. Um, and so the, the request, and I don't know the status of it yet, but the request was, should this move forward, could access occur through his property? And I don't know that yet, but um, that certainly would reduce the impacts um, of entering in that area. But this is, it's not a quick approval process by any means. It will be very complicated. And so, um, so I think that We'll just go out there and see see how it goes. Keep in the back. Well, we need a new sign out there. I wouldn't put it out until they're all finished. But I drove by the uh, yes today. I go yesterday. But anyway, uh, that sign is down. It's leaning against the um, thing. I I don't know whether we could uh, get into that. How, how long is this project going to take? There. There so in school. order to sure. qualify for the temporary use um it has to occur with less than six months time so um you know from the time it's approved until the time it's complete it can only take up six months so um, okay. I, um I did have one other unless other there were other questions i did have another um project i wanted to let you all know about um, Matt Barraby with, actually two of them, but Matt Barraby with the water and sewer who was at the last meeting, um, they have a permit to maintain the sewer line. Um, and that sewer line, as you all know, passes very close to the Little River through the Morissette property. Um, and so he, in order to ensure that there's not, you know, roots and whatnot, um, breaching the pipe, the sewer pipe, which would be bad for everyone because that would mean there could be a release into the Little River. Um, they regularly need to maintain that sewer line. Um, maintenance hasn't happened as regularly um, as, uh, I, I guess, as it would need to. And so I'm meeting with him tomorrow after our um, Drinkwater Road meeting to walk that area and talk about clearing needs. Um, Matt has said that they, they're they willing to work with us and minimize the, the footprint of the clearing, but with the ultimate goal of ensuring that the pipe is secure, um, which I think is a goal we all share. Uh, and, and to also talk about invasive plants that are out there, there's a stand of um, knotweed, and so, um, so we're going to kind of walk through all of that tomorrow. I'm not sure what time that will be because it will be right after the um, drink water road site visit, but I would think maybe by 10.30 or 11. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to give you a heads up about that. And um, when we were talking about lin maintenance of linear rights of ways like these, um, I had encouraged Public Works to sort of adopt a invasive plant management best management practices. And so um, we actually are putting on a training program um, not tomorrow, but the day after online for he and his crew. And it'll go through all of the utility right of way, best management practices for working in and adjacent to wetlands, the requirements of their permits, as well as kind of best management practices for reducing the spread of invasives. So, um, so I think it's been good to partner with Matt. I think, you know, we're making progress. It's definitely a different, um, a different approach than in the past, and I think one that'll that'll 
that'll help us along better down the road. Has he talked at all about doing anything on the sewer right away they have behind uh, Langdon Place and back in there? Yeah, so they received their um, utility permit, uh, maintenance permit from the state. So they will be um, this winter working to maintain all of their utilities, all of the cross country sewer line um, areas. And, um, and so I don't believe that, I don't know what their schedule is for which segment they're working on, but obviously that one is pretty sensitive. There's prime wetland back there. Um, so frozen ground is, I think, their commitment for that area. Any other questions on that? Any other business to talk about tonight? I think we covered all our list, Kristen. Okay. All right, well, we're, we're off to a good start for the year. Ending before 8.30 at least. That's good, thank you. Do you and need I a motion to adjourn, no. Andrew? Yes. So moved. Second, and we need a vote on it. Drew? Yes. Trevor? Yes. Sally votes yes. Dave? Yes. Bill? Yes. Carlos? Yes. Allison, we're adjourned. Yes. Happy New Year. Me. <laughs> well, at, since uh, since Carlos joined us, we... Oh, that's right. I didn't need to be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, have a good night. Thank, thank you, you all. Thank you. Thank you all. Good night. Another long evening ahead since we ended early. Yeah. Don't expect this next month, though. <laughs> Don't get used to this. <laughs> Bye. All right. Good night. Good night.